Hello everyone and welcome to the Wrestling Conversation. This is Pro Wrestling Inside and Out Live with Brent West, Jack Lord, and Rodney West. Everyone, welcome to the Wrestling Conversation. Uh, Jack Lord, how you doing? <laughs> well, as long as we don't talk about webcams, we're going to be okay. There you go. Yeah, we had a little problem with that. Rodney, how are you doing tonight? All well. All is well. All is well here. Well, folks, this is the Wrestling Conversation, and we're going to be talking about uh, pro wrestling history, and we're also going to be talking about what is in the news today. And one of those things that's in the news today, and I did not get to see the, the full story, but I've heard that Sonny, Tammy Finch, is back in jail again. Hmm. Uh, Jack, do you know any anything about the, the Sonny being in jail? We've lost his audio, haven't we? <laughs> lost his audio. Yeah, we well, Jack, got... now we have problems with your audio now coming in. <laughs> yeah, still not there. We've been having some technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> Today with Jack, but uh, he's gonna throw it down. He's gonna throw it down. Yeah, still not working. But anyway, Tammy Tammy Finch is is in in jail again. Also, another story we want to talk about. We have to talk about WWE's eye for an eye match. Rodney, have you heard anything about this match? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, well, evidently, somebody's going to get their eye pulled out okay. in, in WWE. Right. Now, I don't know how this is going to work, because now what's going to come up next? You're going to break somebody's arm, and you're going to have to rip their arm off and hit them with that it? Is, <laughs> yeah, arm on a pole match, I guess. I mean, what is next in professional wrestling, man? I mean, you've beat up people with oranges on one of the one of the one of the shows, and now you've got an eye for an eye where somebody's going to get their eye pulled out. That's some that's some crazy stuff going on in the world of professional wrestling today. Now let's see if Jack is back. Jack, can you hear me? All right, we can hear you. All right, there you are. All right, let's let's not touch anything except for a cigar. We should be okay. <laughs> All right, we asked about Tammy, Tammy, uh, uh, what's her name? Is there Finch? Finch, there was, Sitch, Sitch, uh, Finch or whatever her name Finch is. on TV, Sitch. And <laughs> yeah. anyway, all kinds of those itches words. And her name's Sunny. All right. Okay, so why, here's, why uh, I'm, I'm pulling up the story right now. Uh, let's see. She is currently incarcerated at the Monmouth County Correctional Institution in New Jersey. Uh, her charges are listed as eluding a police officer, contempt, and violating domestic violence restraining order, and operating a motor vehicle during a second license suspension. Hmm. Well, Tammy, Tammy is uh, having some problems. Uh, that's I feel that's bad about. Sonny, I see Jack is just having all kinds of difficulties today. He, yeah. he came back out again. He must be having uh, problems with his internet tonight. Uh, but let's, uh, while we're waiting for Jack to come back on, I want to say hello to Michael Halton. Cheers to all. Uh, we also want to say hello to Dustin Henshaw. How you doing? What's up, guys? Uh, also, David Lawson. I love Monday nights. Thank you so much, David. And uh, David Lawson said, love the shirt, Jack. Love the shirt, Jack, uh, David Lawson. <laughs> uh, Bubba Griffin, Pensacola in the house. Uh, Michael said, no worries, Jack. Have a cigar. And I'm going to need two before this night's over with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, distinguished gentlemen. He must be watching another program. There's none here. Just old, old guy, two old guys that grew up in the wrestling business, and Jack Lord, a legend, dairy wrestler and promoter and professional wrestler and matchmaker, or booker, or as these days, a uh, head writer in the end places. I see you had nothing to say about that. I'm trying to think of what. 
he's, he's messed up again. Uh, Bristol Cash Romaine said, hey, guys, I hope all is well with you guys. Yes, we're doing good. And uh, Turbo Ted with us. Hello, Turbo Ted. I hope, to, uh, hope you, everything's going good uh, for you. Uh, what did Sonny do now? I think we uh, covered that. Hopefully, uh, David, you uh, did. Let's You did hear that. If not, let us know. And, and we'll try to, if Jack don't go on and off, he's having some difficulty. You know, what was that we used to say about Southeastern wrestling, Rodney? Yes, yeah, Southeastern television wrestling with split screen, instant replay, and other technical difficulties. And this is us. We have, we have split screen and we have other technical difficulties. <laughs> In my defense, it's been through two different devices so far. So. <laughs> could be, you know, could be the string, string yard here. It could yeah. be. Uh, Dennis Mitchell said, hello, Jack, Rodney, and Brent, I have a question. What is your Ryan Wright store and Billy store, uh, Spears? Any good stories about uh, Billy? You know, I don't know that I ever talked to Billy Spears. Did you, Rodney? No, I don't remember, remember being where we were at. I think he was there for a while because I remember the Billy Spears mystery man. But was Billy Spears actually there when the Billy Spears? I don't remember him ever showing up. I could be wrong, but I never saw him show up. Now, this might be the time he tried to put a hit on uh, Austin Idol or somebody. That might have been there during that time. <laughs> Impossible. It could have been. And, you know, and re really, Ron Wright, we never was around Ron Wright except for the little time we were there in USA Championship Wrestling. But uh, I don't remember him doing anything of any. Uh, any. Now, if you want to hear those stories, Ron Fuller's got those stories. 10stud.com. Uh, some great stories about Ron Wright, but uh, we just never really hung around Ron Wright. That was way really, really before our time uh, uh, Ron Wright was. So uh, did you ever meet Eddie Farhack, the original Sheik? Uh, I, you know, we, we met him, but I, I I can't say that we have any great stories about this Sheik. I think we met him one time, uh, but I do remember him being dressed to the T's uh, the one time we did meet him. <laughs> he was like a suit, and I mean, he, he, he was dressed. Uh, thank you so much, Dennis, for your uh, questions. Uh, Mike Schaefer, Tammy just can't stay straight. Unfortunately, you are right about that. Uh, Rita Cantrell watching from Greer, South Carolina. How you doing, Rita? And Rita is with us almost every show. And we thank she sure you. is. And we thank you so much, Rita, for uh, being a part of it. And uh, old, Th uh, old Theodore McIrvin, Turbo Ted himself, said thanks. There's Jeffrey Archie. Hey, there you have. Good evening, gentlemen. J Jeffrey got some great things. We do have to get them on. Here, here's the problem. I want to talk about this just for a second. And Jack knows we're having this problem as well. We have had over 400 people who have wanted to be part of the show. And there is no way we can get everyone on. If we if we bring one or two guys on, then you're going to make 300 and something people mad. Am I correct, Jack? Exactly. So we have to figure out a way. We are trying to figure out a way, way the way we can do it where it will be it'll be uh, fair to everyone and we don't make one or two, we don't make 398 people mad because we let Well, one one of our guidelines is we're we're looking for historical context. You know, if you were involved uh in the business in the, in, in the old days uh of significance, if, you know, if you went places and did things oh uh, yeah we want to get you on here and talk to you uh you know there's a lot of guys that's just got wrestling stories outside of wrestling uh that's not the kind of things we cover here you know that's that's the jim Cornettes and all those other broadcasts out there that that delve into personal issues that's not what we're doing here we're trying to stay in line with just historical reference for, for what we're saying. We deviate a little bit. We throw some personal stuff in there, but, you know, it's, it's our podcast. So. <laughs> this is true. So, so and, and I did tell one guy, go get your own when he got mad at me. So. <laughs> oh, well. But, I mean, we will, we will try to, and we are trying to work it out. And, and once we figure out how we can do it, and uh, and and because we've got to keep people, we got to watch it because uh, sometimes they'll come in or say something they shouldn't say. So we've got to figure out how, how we can do that, and we will figure it out. And and once we do, we'll let the wrestling fans, uh, we'll let you know. And and by the way, we we got a, we got a letter from somebody that wanted us to to talk a little bit more about Gorgeous George Jr. 
But here, here's the problem. We're calling our, our people that are watching, we're calling them followers and subscribers. And me and Jack was saying, we need a name for the people so we don't say followers and subscribers. That seems a little, uh, you know, a little bad, really, to call them that. And, and Jack, you come up with a couple of names. What was the names that you, you thought like, we, we, we could call our, our followers and subscribers? Uh, I remember Insider Nation being one. Um, Pro's lesson. Well, no, I can't remember that one now. Pro Elites or something. I can't remember. Anyway. Well, we, we're wanting you to help us come up with that. So we don't say, well, our followers. We can at least say the insiders or the insider nations. We, we like to give you a name so we're not just saying the followers and the subscribers. You know, at least we've got a name for you. And we're going to put this on Facebook uh, we're going to put a post up there and people can just send in their names of what they think that, that we could we could give a, our, our followers and our subscribers names. So we just don't call them followers and subscribers. And we'll start that uh, tomorrow morning. It'll be pinned up to the top and you'll be able to uh, put what name you think we need to come up with. So we just ain't saying, hey, the followers and subscribers we will give everybody a name. I think that would I think that would make everybody feel a little better. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mitch Lucas is with us, our, our cohort and the host of Continental Championship Wrestling Discussions on Thursday night. Here's one from a, man, a fan who was a young wrestler that you knew was going to make it and did. All right, Rodney. Me, me, me. Shawn Michaels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, no doubt about it. We saw him make really uh, one of his first matches in Mid South, and it was like right out of the back. He was right there, Shawn Michaels, absolutely. Beaumont, Texas, first time we ever watched him wrestle, and uh, Jose Lothario was right there with him. And I cannot remember who he wrestled. I think it could have been Art Cruz. Possibly, yeah. I believe it might have been Art Cruz. Uh, another Bob one, another person we knew right off the bat. Jimmy Cornette, when we were doing the Georgia Championship Wrestling Superstars, we all knew this man was going to be huge, absolutely huge, and we were right. It was fantastic. Uh, also, when we saw uh, Steve Williams, a young Steve Williams, and Rod Price. We thought Rod Price was going to be a big star as well. Uh, he didn't He didn't quite make what Stone Cold Steve Austin made to. But the, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not talking about Dr. Death Steve Williams either. I'm talking about Steve Williams that became Stone Cold hey. Steve Austin. All right, Jack, who's somebody that you've seen that you said, hey, this guy's going to make it? Brian Armstrong. He just I, he just had some charisma. I, I honestly the first time I wrestled him one of his first or second matches, and uh, I, I've said this to his face, he was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but but he learned, and but that charisma was there from the get go. So I, I had no doubt he was going to make it. Uh, Bristol Crash Roman, I miss the old school wrestling like NWA Mid South. I, you know I do miss it. You know. Here, here in, in Pro Wrestling Inside and Out, now we, we did a show on Friday night. It was just on YouTube, and we talked about well, there's a there's a bug, there's a bug messing with me over here. We talked, <laughs> we talked about uh Mid South Wrestling, and we we seen two shows that wasn't that great. So not everything back in the old days was great, but the majority of it was was really, really good. And, and at least we didn't see an eye for an eye match where somebody's eye was going to be pulled out. At least we didn't see that. Because I don't know where you're going from that. I mean, Normally, well, if we would have seen an eye for an eye match, Dead would have already tried to find somewhere else to work. Yeah. Uh, that and scaffold matches are the two things that could kill you. Yeah, territory. you don't want them yeah, you, don't, you don't want scaffold matches. They will kill your territory. They will. We watched Mid-South Wrestling get hurt by a scaffold match. Because there's, there's not much you can do in those things. Uh, Aaron Fink, watching from Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, you have put together a fantastic show. That's why I tune in. Well, thank you so much, Michael. We appreciate it. Uh, Michael Barr, hello from Southeast Alabama. Uh, Michael Halton said, Insider Nation is really good, Jack. So Mr. Right Ooh La La gives us the approval. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Shannon Kathleen Moore. Hello. How you doing? Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, Mike Schaefer says pro wrestling insiders. 
The insiders. Okay. That's all right. That's great. The insiders. I do like the insiders. Yep. The insiders do sound good. Let, let us know. What do you think? The insiders. And by the way, also while you're while you're while you're sending this stuff. And whether whether or not you're watching this live or you're watching on the replay, let us know what you think about the eye for an eye match. I just like to know what people think about that. I just think it's nuts. But you know, hey, somebody might love it out there. I just don't I just don't know. I think the next thing is you break a guy's arm and you you, you now, now you have to tear his arm off and hit him with it. And that's how you uh that's the how you reason they don't have any loser leave WWE matches because they don't have anybody to replace them. <laughs> Are they going to start killing characters off like they did? Yes, on, uh, they're going to come back. Yeah, won't be long to the zombies. Won't be long to the zombies will be coming in. Yeah. Because zombies you know, next. <laughs> because did they do that on uh, that Lucha Libre show? Whatever that Lucha Libre. I, I, I believe they did Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground. Didn't they kill people off and bring them back? Uh, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Michelle Lucas. Hello, Jack Lord. It's nice to see you, my friend. Hey, it Michelle. won't be long until they'll be doing recasting. Now playing the part of Hulk Hogan will be. <laughs> now let's remember they tried now that. Playing, now playing the role of Randy Savage. <laughs> they they tried that with Jane Diesel. Jane McMahon. And uh, what was the other one they tried it with? It was Diesel and somebody else. Kane? Uh, no, uh, Razor, Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon. Diesel and Razor Ramon. They tried that. That didn't work out too good for them. <laughs> uh, Jason Week said, what, what's up, guys? Jack, when are you going to get the West Brothers to come to Rome to have cigars with us? I've been trying. Well, listen, listen, you know, when all this stuff finishes up, and there's a lot of things going on in the world, <laughs> then we'll get down there. But right now, we're, we're going we're gonna to try to stay away, stay at home. Now, I think we are going to come there. I, I'm pretty sure if Jack worked it out, I think we're going to be part of the fan fest or something. So uh, at least at least Jack and Rodney are going to be there. You never know about me. I may have something else I have to do that day. You never know what, what can show up during those days. But, uh, but we are going to try to get there, though. We are going to try to get there on that. Uh, we're going to put that. up a giant picture of you with an X across it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bart said that I for that match sounds really physical or violent. Well, yeah, it must be. I think they're going to do a CGI. Sounds more to me like very desperate. I, I think they're doing it from what I, you know, I've got a bug over here. It's just, it's just driving me crazy. I may have to go <laughs> off ahead. and kill this <laughs> bug and come back. Man, that thing is all up in my face. Well, well, if you had one of the official pro wrestling inside and out masks, you wouldn't have to worry about it. That's <laughs> right. That's true. That's, that's true. Uh, Aaron thinks that I like the Insiders Nation. It's uh, yeah, well, good. He it's good. It sounds good, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> now here we do try to be. We do try to be clean. And occasionally we will have a wrestler or something on, and he'll use some language. But you know, we will have to <laughs> sometimes. A couple metaphors. Uh, but let, let me let's let me talk about a little bit because somebody asked me about Gorgeous George Jr. and I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about him because they they asked us can you give some more information on on uh, Gorgeous George Jr. and they they did ask I guess they they watched the program and probably didn't get a no he was not he was not kin to uh, Gorgeous George and uh, I want people to re realize he was not kin to him uh, his his real name was Richard Phelps so just to interrupt right here just really quick. So if the WWE wanted to do Hulk Hogan Jr., that would be okay. We have George, Gorgeous George, and then we have Gorgeous George Jr. So is it is it possible they could go that route? They could, yes. Yeah, they so could have all John Michaels Jr. I see, I see the point. Okay, go ahead. Well, now the next they say the next Shawn Michaels is that uh what's the guy's name, Jackie? He, he just now got put the the raw Matt something. Uh, Matt, Matt Riddle. Riddle. I've seen the guy wrestle. I'm not for sure he's the next Shawn Michaels. I uh, I can't get past the no footwear. Uh, he he's great talent. I think he is great talent. But the 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 no boots and the no knee pads absolutely kills me. <laughs> All right, folks. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, uh, send them in, and we'll uh, we'll get to them. But let's. Okay, let I'm talk. sorry to derail you. Go back to George Gorgeous George Jr. 
Oh, I saw that's where that's where I was heading back. Okay, I was heading back there. You know, I was traveling. I was traveling on that road. Now I'm going to travel back to that I'm road. I'm sorry there. for the exit there. We had. To <laughs> I, I want to travel. I, I want to show. I want to show people again for people who don't know who Gorgeous George Jr. Gorgeous George Jr. Right here. Uh, I think when we left off, he had changed his name to Gaylord George because he was being sued by the uh, wife of Gorgeous George. So he goes to uh, British Columbia, Canada on February 1968, and he, Abdul the Butcher, he teams with Abdul the Butcher while he's there, and he defeats Rocky Johnson and Bruce Kirk. <laughs> that, that's a, that's, you know, that's a, Abdul the Butcher and Gaylord George. That's, that's what, a, what a combination. And by April, by April, he, re, he would be wrestling against Haystacks Calhoun there. And in June of 1968, he would return to Leroy McGurk's uh, territory and resume using the name Gorgeous George Jr., so I guess by then he he got the okay to use it, and he would get in a feud with Benjamin Ramirez as the mummy. So that had to be very interesting. While in Leroy's uh, tri-state championship wrestling, he would meet another Haystacks, and this guy would be uh, Haystacks Maldoon. I think that's how you say his name, Maldoon. And in, Maldoon, and, yeah. Is that is that how you say his name? And he would, so. wrestle, he would wrestle them and and eventually team with them in a feud. Uh, he would then uh, win the uh, the tri states tag team titles with this guy right now, right here, Jerry Kozak. Now this guy was in shape. Yep. I never really I never seen him in January of 1969. Dory Funk Sr. would uh, contact uh, Gorgeous George Jr. and uh, he would ask him to come to the Amarillo territory. And there he would wrestle against people like Chief Little Eagle, Bobby Duncan, Ricky Romero, Dory Funk Sr., Terry Funk, Dory Funk Jr., and Lord Patrick Patterson, which everyone knows just as Pat Patterson, but at the time he was he was Lord Patrick Patterson. Let me, he would also start teaming with Buddy Colt, and they would have a successful tag team, and they would go against the Mask Infernos with Jimmy Dykes. Let me let me share, let me share some uh some stuff, some some cards. Here's one. It's there's a ten man Russian roulette over the top rope battle royal. I wonder what a Russian roulette battle royal was. Does anybody know? Today they would. Yeah, have I know what Russian. And, uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. what Russian. I know what a Russian roulette is, but only with a handgun. <laughs> so, so I don't think this was that. I don't think that was. That. <laughs> Uh, but they said it's going to be for two thousand dollars purse, a ton and a half reinforced ring. But a tag team match was Buddy Colt and Gorgeous George Jr. against J.C. Dykes and the Infernos. Dory Funk Senior, I think it says punches Grizzly Smith. Iron Stomach, Iron Stomach. I, I remember Tom Pritchard talking about that. Lou Thez against Ricky Romero. Mountain Mike against Harley Race on this card. That is a great card. And well, we have an added attraction at the bottom of it. Diamond Lil against Little Darling Dagmar. I love got, Diamond Lil. What's the cartoon character in the middle there, I wonder? I like it. It's pretty good. They even have, they even have their own uh, logo wrestling coliseum up there. I see that. And here's here's another card. This is the Wrestling King of Sports, Amarillo Sports Arena, main event tag team match, the Infernos against Buddy Colt and Gorgeous George Jr., Special attraction, Terry Funk against J.C. Dyke. Special referee, Man Mountain Mike. Semi, two out of three falls, Harley Race against Dory Funk Jr. Uh, Man Mountain Mike against the Black Ace. So what year are we talking about here? This would be 1969. Okay. This would be 1969. Hey, I like the little wrestlers over here wrestling. It together. seems like yeah. we might have some programs from this. I think we do. I think Jimmy Doc sent us here. Here's here's another one. Uh, double main event, second main North American Championship. Buddy Colt against Dory Funk Sr. Mr. Ito and uh, Yaka Uchi Uchi, or whatever you say that name, against the Infernos. Harley Race and Lawman, Ricky Romero and Gorgeous George. This is all during Gorgeous George's time uh, wrestling in Amarillo. He was there for a very long time. Uh, here's another one. Another one of these uh, Russian... Roulette, Battle Royals, they must have loved those there. Uh, and Grizzly Smith and Mountain Mountain Mike against Mad Dog Race, which I'm getting that's Harley Race. Did he, 
Do you wrestle those men, mad, mad Dog Race? And Iron Mike, Terry Funk, and Gorgeous George Jr., Buddy Coat against Nick Kozak, Ricky Romero, and Super Ferno, and uh, Chad, uh, how do you say that name? Uh, and Art Nelson, Sweet Carlson, and Mr. Edo. Uh, another card, Terry Funk versus Harley Race. Now, this remember, this is 1969. And I think Terry Funk was very young during this uh, this time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want you to I want you to read this semifinal. I found this to be the club footed Inferno. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I found that to be very funny. I guess Wally McDaniel. I, I, I guess that's one way to get the gimmick over. Just go ahead and call him the club footed guy. Uh, you know, uh, later on, Robert Fuller would use the same uh, same thing in, in his matches. Uh, but uh, here's another one. Uh, Dory Funk Jr., Buddy Colt. Uh, Dory Funk Sr., Brass Nuts Championship against Harley Race. Uh, Killer Co Cox and Gorgeous George are teaming here against the Infernos. Uh, the first match, Little Eagle against Jack Curtis. Uh, here's another match, Abdullah the Butcher. Now, this would have been while he was in, in – uh, I think this is why I was in Canada. That's when he wrestled as Gaylord George. And he, get, he went against Rocky Johnson uh, during that. And Abdullah the Butcher and Emily Dupree, uh, Carl Von Steiger was on it. Uh, you know, they, that, that was – but, I mean, Gorgeous George, I mean, he had a I mean a magnificent amount of matches. Uh, here he is at the Livestock Pavilion. I think this is why he was doing his Gaylord George as well. Uh, Haystacks Calhoun against the Assassins, which the Assassins are going to be Jody Hamilton and uh, Tom Ernesto. Uh, you know, there you see Abdullah Butcher gets Don Leon Jonathan, which I've heard that was a spectacular wrestler. Uh, here's another uh, card uh, while he was in Texas, the Infernos, uh, J.C. Dykes against Ricky Romero and Jerry Kozak and Man Mountain Mike. Uh, Harley Race and Gorgeous George Jr. against Mr. Ito. Uh, I mean, Gorgeous George had a great career, and he really got over big time. But I want to tell you a story, and I'm going to have to read this story to you because this comes directly from Dory Funk Jr. He said, I will always remember the night Victor the Bear came to Amarillo for a bear over-the-top rope battle royal. Early in the day, the local game warden, Woody Pond, came to my father and said a black bear was a game animal protected and could not perform in a wrestling match. It was Gorgeous George Jr.'s idea with the approval of my father, Dory Funk Sr., that George and Buddy Coat would go downtown and buy a case of Lady Clairol hairspray. And that night in the dressing room, Gorgeous George and Buddy Coat sprayed Victor the Black Bear with a full case of Lady Clairol hairspray and Victor entered the ring as Borscht the Russian Brown Bear. <laughs> <laughs> but no longer a black bear. <laughs> All right, so then he says the bear was angry. <laughs> the bear was angry over the smell of the lady clear out hairspray all over his body and came to the ring growling, angry, 600 pound bear. The bear chased everybody out. Oh, out and over the top rope, except me, which is Dory Funk Jr. telling the story, my father, Dory Funk Sr., and Gorgeous George Jr. With quick thinking by my father, Dad and I undid the turnbuckles in the corners of the ring and dropped the three ropes down to the apron of the ring. Next, Dad and I got the attention of the bear, and Gorgeous George tackled Victor the Black Bear, <laughs> alias Boris the Brown Bear, in the buttocks. <laughs> And the bear was over the top rope, even though all the ropes were laying on the apron. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the fans in Amarillo were so mad that night, claiming that Gorgeous George Jr. and the Funks cheated the bear. Great story by Gorgeous George Jr. <laughs> you're going to get Buddy Colt on here sometime to talk about that. Uh, yeah. well, that would be awesome. Yeah, that is a very funny That would be awesome. But Gorgeous George Jr., we're, we're going to talk more about Gorgeous George Jr. because he was a great, uh, I think he was a great personality in, in professional wrestling. And once he gets to be a manager of a Mongolian stomper and stuff, it, it's, it's, even, it's, even, it's even better. Uh, but uh, I just thought I wanted to share that story about the bear. I, I found that to be very, very funny 
indeed. All right, let's uh, let's make sure we don't uh, miss somebody. Uh, Robert K. Burnham said, no, unfortunately. I'm not for sure what he was talking about. Uh, Michael Barr, old, old school wrestling. Uh, David Lawson says, any good J.C. Dyke stories? You know, we we don't we don't really have because we never was around Jason. I don't think I ever watched him manage ever. And my middle name is Dykes. I was I was I was actually named after Jason Dykes because Jimmy Dykes is the one that started my father in, in professional wrestling. So, uh, but we don't have to, we don't have a lot of stories of uh, him. Do you have any, Rodney? No. Dad, uh, he he just never told that many stories about uh, Jimmy Dykes. But uh, I am named after him. So. Uh, Michael Barr, Club Foot and Inferno, pirate wrestler. <laughs> uh, David Lawson, said, Ron Fuller always says the Club Foot and Inferno on his podcast. Uh, that must be what they called him at the at the time, I guess. Never got a mom Hussein who said the West Brothers. Our man Hussein. Who is our man Hussein? Tell us who that I is. I'm not for sure. Yeah, I, I know that name, but I can't place him. Right now, I can't place it. Maybe, maybe later on we can. Uh, let me go past. Uh, let's go. Somebody's over here trying. Yeah, to. we don't. We don't need Scottish bagpipes. Yeah, we will. I'm Sorry. Irish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Barr. Does anyone recall when Don Carson, Eddie Sullivan, and the Rizzo's Gorgeous George wrestled in Southeastern Championship Wrestling? Yes. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and Eddie Sullivan came. I mean. I think way before we we watched it, but we certainly we certainly know Don Carson and what he what he was capable of, and uh, one of the greatest psychologists. And uh, I mean, he he had that psychology down when it came to professional wrestling. You know, Eddie, Eddie Sullivan was a big mainstay in Gulf Coast wrestling there for years and years. Uh, Travis said, "Any good stories about Leon Baxter? We don't have any stories of Leon Baxter. Jack, do you?" I wrestled Leon once he came out of retirement. There was some, uh, folks trying to do a show out of, uh, Montgomery and film TV. Dickie Steinborn was the booker and I went down and, uh, uh, worked Leon, uh, in a match. I don't, I don't think maybe they filmed maybe two weeks of TV is all they did. And that was, they were, they were done then, but Leon was really nice. Uh, he really, <laughs> Taught me a lot that night. <laughs> I was really green, and and uh, he let me know I wouldn't get nothing, but I didn't deserve <laughs> nothing either. So you know. <laughs> well, now next week, next week, Charlie Black will be a guest of ours next week, right here on this program, and he can tell you some stories about Leon Baxter. I am pretty sure of that. So he will be with us next week, uh, and so uh, stay tuned for him next uh, next Monday night on the wrestling uh, conversation. All right, Rodney, are we ready for Georgia Championship Wrestling? I think we are. Hold on. Let me flip my pages. Let me flip my pages. This is a big one coming up on a Thanksgiving night show coming up on this one, too. Let me see. Here we go. Yes, here we go. We're going to start on Friday, November the 11th of 1977, Atlanta City Auditorium. Opening match was Randy Savage against uh, Charlie Cook. Then it was Butch Malone against Tommy Rich. Jim, Jim Gregmeyer versus Bob Armstrong tag team match. Ole Anderson and Sergeant Jacques Goulet against Tony Atlas and Mr. Wrestling 2. Pac Song was Rock Hunter against Dick Slater. And in the main event, it was a Texas death match. Stan Hansen against Dusty Rhodes. And I do believe that was probably right after Stan Hansen coming to the ring and give the big lariat to Dusty and to uh, Dick Slater to tag match. Because I think on the previous one, it was Ole and Gene against Dick Slater and uh, Dusty Rhodes. And I believe that was the night that that great interview Stan Hansen said, I strapped the American nightmare with the uh, with the Larry. And then How Dick Slater got in there and he said, and then I got that snotty nose Dick Slater while I was at it. It was How great. How about Anderson and Sergeant Jock Goulet met, uh, team with each other? Because this has been a couple of weeks now. Well, at one time, they were the Georgia Tag Team Champions, and they had a special stipulation that the Georgia Tag Team titles could only change hands if Ole was pinned. I didn't think that was fair, but that's the way they were doing it back then. But, yeah, Ole, and, uh, Ole Anders and Sergeant Jacques Goulet, Georgia Tag Team Champions, and like I said, the, the way to win the Georgia Tag Team titles was to pin Ole. If you pin Sergeant, Slaw, uh, Sergeant Goulet all you want to, but yeah, he, was, it was, he had to be Ole to become the Georgia Tag Team Champions. 
Then the next show was on November the 18th. That's a Friday night. Again, Atlanta City Auditorium. Randy Savage against Raymond Rougeau. Then it was Jim Dalton against Bob Armstrong. Tag match, Sergeant Jacques Goulet and the Mask Man. The Mask Man, I don't, yes, they didn't have a name for a guy. He was a substitution for the great Mephisto against Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas. And then we had Abdul the Butcher with Rock Hunter against Rufus R. Jones. And in the main event, Texas Tornado match, Ole Anderson and Stan Hansen against Dusty Rhodes and Dick Slater. Fantastic card. Well, this was, and this would have been Raymond Rougeau's first appearance, I think, in Georgia. I think he had just come in from, uh, from Canada. So. And then last uh, on this particular one we're going to cover is the Thanksgiving Wrestling Extravaganza at the Omni in Atlanta. That was on November the 24th, 1977. Opening match was Randy Savage against Jerry Stubbs. Jim Cragmire against Richard Blood. The interns. Now, I'm not sure. Was the interns the interns with Dr. Kim Rainey Britt? I don't believe it was, no. Okay, well, it was the interns against uh, Charlie Cook and Raymond Rougeau. David Schultz against Tommy Rich. Jacques Goulet against Bob Armstrong. Ole Anderson and Stan Hansen against Dick Slater and Mr. Wrestling 2. Another tag match, Pac Song and the Sheik with Rock Hunter against Ernie Ladd and Thunderbolt Patterson. And the main event, Abdullah the Butcher with Rock Hunter against Tony Atlas. That was at the Omni. On I, bet that was, I bet that was a packed crowd. That a packed night. house, yeah, no doubt. All right, there's another story we need to talk about. And, 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 and this story I just heard today. Now, I don't know when this interview was done, but evidently the hands of stone, the one-man gang, Ronnie Garvin, said some disparaging words about the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Did you hear about this, Jack? Mm, I hadn't, hadn't heard that one yet. Evidently, he said that Dusty Rhodes was overrated and he never drew any money. Mm. I'd, now, I'd, I'd have to say that Ronnie's uh, had too much to drink. <laughs> yeah, I think Dusty Rhodes uh, drew a lot of money as the Texas Outlaws with Dick Burdock. He also drew a lot of money as a hill in Florida. And when they turned on baby face, drew some of the biggest houses in Florida wrestling history. And then he went to Georgia, drew all kinds of – these matches when, when – uh, uh, let's see, Dusty Rose against Stan Hansen, Atlanta City Auditorium. How many people did that hold, Rodney? 6,000. i say 6,000 people were there to see that. Also, Ole Anderson, Stan Hansen against Dick Slater and Dusty Rhodes. Probably 6,000 people went and seen that. The Omni probably did 13,000 people to 16,000. How much did the Omni hold? 17,000. I would say yeah. I would say with Tony Atlas, Abdul the Butcher, the main event. And I would say, well, now Dusty wasn't on that card. So I can't make that. I can't make that. He wasn't on that card, but but, but Dusty drew a lot of money. And and I'm not ta- no, don't don't I'm not taking nothing against Ron Garvin. He was a, he was a, he was a great wrestler. But I oh, think yeah. I think when you're looking at money and drawing abilities, I think Dusty Rose drew uh, a, whole lot, a whole lot more money than Ron Garvin did. And 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 no disrespect to Ron Garvin, I just. Uh, I don't think anybody will uh, dispute that Dusty Rhodes. Was no, I'll, I'll just say this: it's just, uh, as you know, I'm I'm known to say things. <laughs> Ronnie Garvin made a terrible mistake in Knoxville, and he paid dearly for it. And he might have drawn the same amount of money as Dusty Rhodes if he wouldn't have uh, tried his little trick up in Knoxville. Yeah, but, but I don't. I'm not. I, but I, I have respect for Mr. Garvin. Yeah, he, he is a great professional wrestler. I I'm, just, think, I, I'm just calling it like I see it. Uh, don't you agree, though, uh, guys, that uh, Dusty was one of the biggest stars in professional wrestling history? He was at one time the biggest star, headlining at Madison Square Garden against superstar Billy Graham. Many times over. The great fuse between him and Terry Funk. The great feud between him and the Andersons. <laughs> Ric Flair. Ernie Ladd. That's the best, the best stuff ever with him and well, Ernie Ladd from Florida. There was only two guys that were real – well, three. Andre, Ric Flair, and Dusty that were in demand everywhere. Terry Fox. And I, Andre was uh, an attraction, as you, you know, he knew that. Uh, Flair was world's champion. So he went everywhere and he drew, you know, taking nothing from him. Dusty was a professional wrestler. 
who could put butts in seats and he didn't need a world title and he didn't need to be eight foot tall in order to do that. Oh. So I, I put, I've always put Dusty in a class by himself in, in that aspect. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, there we and, go. <laughs> and no disrespect to Ronnie Garvin. Uh, we've seen them have some great matches, but uh, uh, we will. Everyone at Pro Wrestling Inside now, these three people I have to say, Dusty Rhodes was a big draw in professional wrestling. There's no doubt. Uh, David Lawson said uh, he was talking about that uh, Armand Hussein. He said he wrestled world class and briefly in Mid Atlantic. I think him and Gary. Yeah, I, I looked him up. He uh, he wrestled quite a bit in uh, uh, the Portland area when he started out. He was in Texas. He was in Alabama. I don't remember him being in here, but, uh, uh, he did, he did travel around quite a bit. He had several different gimmicks, Mike Harmon, Armand Hussein, our man, Armand, how you say it, Hussein and Hussein, the butcher. He, uh, he passed away in 2007. I don't know that I remember him. Rodney, uh, him? I don't have any memory. It, 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 we, we, he might've wrestled another, another name because it seems like he was, he was quite a, the veteran, so it, it's possible that he could be some a different name. Michael Barr said Leon Baxter was the wrestling pro. That's right. Uh, yeah, we now we we do know of Leon Baxter. We just don't have any stories of him because that that would have been before our I think it would have been before our time. Uh, we didn't get the southeastern and the Alabama area to 1983, uh, so uh, it would have been way before our time. But like I said, Charlie Platt will be with us, and uh, Michael come back next week and ask. Uh, Ask Charlie Platt some stories about. Yeah, uh, that'll be some good ones. It'll be a, he'll be able to help you. Uh, Travis Edison, we did a CCD CCW reunion sh a sh show a few years back, and he tried to jump over the top rope and mask himself. Who tried to unmask himself, uh, Travis? I'm assuming he's talking about Leon. Oh, Leon! <laughs> Leon tried to. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah, I think he did. I know him for many years. Uh, David Lawson said Hanson was gold in Georgia Championship. Oh man, yeah that that nineteen seventy seven when he becomes a Georgia champion, uh, he's awesome. He is awesome. He also said Rock Hunter was very underrated manager. I liked Rock Hunter, but man, am I just was it just me, or did he have the interviews that could put you to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> so y'all y'all talk about him. I'm gonna take a drink <laughs> of apple juice. Rock Hunter drew a lot of money in Georgia. I yeah. will not take that away from him. Was he one of the most my favorite people? No. No. Uh he 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 did a lot of things in Georgia Championship Wrestling after that that probably would not make us big fans of Rock Hunter. So and 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 we'll leave it at that and we'll talk about that on a later show where we're talking about Georgia Championship Wrestling uh later on in the years. But uh Travis said uh, he said Michael Barr knew him. Uh, he's talking about when he was in the Dalton livestock. Uh Michael said Dusty was a very great draw. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, Mike Shaver said, obviously, Ron was still uh, on plan B. <laughs> no, I'm going to say this. <laughs> I, I believe that Dusty did Ronnie Garvin wrong. I really do. I, I, I think Dusty oh, yeah. did Ronnie Garvin wrong when he tried to turn him. And, and I think that was just pure out jealousy uh, on, the, on Dusty's part. I, thought, I think it was a terrible mistake. Yeah. That whole ordeal, I think it was a terrible mistake, and and I'll uh, I'll give Ronnie Garvin that. Uh, let's see, uh, Michael Barr said, "How many territories did D Dusty wrestle in?" I think maybe all of them. All of them, just about. Well, I don't know if he. I don't remember him working for Nick Goulas, but I pretty much everybody else, I, I think so. Yeah, big time in Mid South. He was there for. He, he worked for Watts for a long time. Uh, they in said and out, not constant. David Lawson said that Ronnie Garvin said he made a mistake during the 1979 takeover, and uh, Roddy, R Ronnie Garvin did. So, yeah, he did slam Andre the Giant. He, he, he certainly did. And I, uh, which, you know, Hulk Hogan was not the only person to ever slam Andre the Giant. There's a lot of people did it back in the territory days. Because Andre knew one thing he was going to be leaving, and he wanted to get yeah. somebody over on his while he was there. Andre was good for business. He wasn't. He just didn't come in there and beat everybody. He, he was there to get people over, and and that was his his whole 
uh, deal. So he was uh, he was good for the wrestling business, no doubt. Uh, Bubba Griffin, he was on the Gulf Coast talking about uh, uh, Leon Baxter. Uh, you know, there's I, I want to talk talking about Andre the Giant for a minute. <laughs> I, I've got to tell the story of Andre the Giant, and, I, and I've actually told it on on. Uh, and I, let me let me uh, throw a picture up of Andre the Giant. He's he's with Gordon Soley. Uh, here he is with Gordon Soley. He's got his he's got his hand up. Let me let me, let me turn this uh, this comment off. But uh, there you see, Andre's hand was as about as big as as Gordon Soley's old head. <laughs> yeah, look at this. But I got to tell this story. In 1974, Dad was Dad was refereeing, and and the and the match was going to be the Novaks. What was the Novaks manager again, Rodney? Uh, Jimmy Kent. Jimmy that's Kent. The bounty, that's the Bounty Hunters. The Bounty Hunters against Andre the Giant. Now this was this was going to be the match, and either Jerry Jarrett or Bill Watts. Can you remember which which Bill Watts? It was Bill Watts. Bill Watts told my father. He said, "Now in in the match, the match is going to be going." And he said, so during this match, he said, they're, they're, we're going to get, we're going to go, the, the, the bounty hunters are going to be on them and they're going to be on them. And, and Andre's going to make his comeback. And when he does, he's going, he's going to get you and he's going to get rid of you. Dad said, oh, sounds good. Sounds good. I'll be, that, that sounds good. I'll be doing it. He said, then he gets in the ring and he said, the match is going. And he said they get to the point where the bounty hunter's on, and Andre comes back, and Dad tries to get him. He picks up Dad over his head like this, and Dad says, "He he kept on thinking in his mind, they're gonna get Andre's gonna get rid of me. Andre's gonna get rid of me." And he's thinking, "Does this mean he's gonna throw me over <laughs> somewhere?" So he says he gets down. Takes and grabs a hold of Andre's hair and just twists and gets a hold of it. And Andre's yelling at him, let go, boss, let go. And Dad says, no, I'm not letting go. No, I'm not letting go. And he says, he just keeps on. He says, boss, let go, let go. <laughs> so finally he lets loose of it, and Andre just takes him and just sets him on the apron of the ring. But in his mind, when he thinks, I'm going to get rid of him, he's going to throw him out. into the fourth and fifth row. <laughs> There's some things that go through your mind when you're in the wrestling business. Did anybody ever tell you, Jack, a finish? And then when you got in the ring, you were thinking, I mean, now how's that going to work? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I worked at Boas. <laughs> <laughs> while we're thinking about it, what we're thinking before we run out of time, we want to tell everybody about the uh, Pro Wrestling Inside and Out uh, merchandise that we have for sale. We have we have T-shirts, we've got uh, mugs, we've got uh, face masks, and we've got the Pro Wrestling Inside and Out. We also have the bomber wear. As you see, we got uh, shirts of uh, Jack the Bomber Lord. Uh, Jack, you got anything to say about your uh, merchandise? Uh, yeah, buy some. Uh, Halloween's coming up. Y'all need to scare people, and that way you don't have to wear masks. <laughs> But uh, you can go. You you go to Facebook. There's a shop now, and it'll take you to the Tea Springs uh, uh, website. It's got all our merchandise there, and we're in the process of uh, of getting some uh, other little designs as well. Uh, but uh, but go there if you want to support us. Support us and buy a T-shirt. And uh, but we wanted to tell you about that. All right. Before we leave tonight, Rodney, any stories, anything that you need to talk about? We won't bring up the name Kevin Sullivan. We know that's bad. Bad luck. <laughs> Uh, are we talking about Kevin Sullivan? I didn't know we was talking about Kevin Sullivan. Well, no, we weren't going to talk, but I just didn't want to. No, we're not going to talk. It's no, okay. That's good. Uh, okay. All right. Well, Come. okay. Um, no, I want to. Uh, a guy mentioned about Ron Wright. And when, when we were up in Knoxville doing the USA, I'm just going to be brutally honest. He was the only thing worth watching on that show. I'm just, I, that's just my, my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. But. Ron Wright was the only thing worth watching. I looked forward to seeing what Ron Wright was going to say this week. And he was just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But they had him all over. The, one of my complaints at that time, they had him all over the complaint, all over the TV. But he was never in the shows. Never. He showed up to Knoxville, but he was never in any of the other towns. And the people wanted to see him. He was a living legend. 
in that part of the country. And so I just <laughs> I just want to say, uh, yeah, Ron Wright was a class act. No matter what he did, he was a class act. And, and he he was on every single time I've seen him. And really, if you listen to the reaction of the crowd of during these USA Championship Wrestling shows, basically he's the only one they really respond, respond to is Ron Wright. The only Ron Wright story I know for certain, and we'll we'll have to uh, we'll have to say this in a. He comes to Knoxville, and he's going to be there the first night. He's going to be there, so he talks Ron Fuller into letting them use a bad word on the mic. You remember this, Rodney? Yeah. And Ron says, "No, no, no." He says, "No, listen, I'm telling you, let me do it." He said, "It'll get it'll get a reaction from the people. If it don't, I'll never I'll never even try it ever again." And so he gets out there, and, and, the, and the premise of the match is the lights go down. There's Ron Wright standing at the, uh, on the apron. He has a garbage can, and he hits Doug Furness with it, and Doug Furness goes out. He gets on the mic, and he says, let me tell you something. You think you're the king of Knoxville? I've been the king of Knoxville for 30 years, and let me tell you, you no good SOB. And that whole building went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't done that often, so it got the response that hey, that's the that's the deal. Don't do something too often that the people just think, you know, I don't it don't mean nothing. But it was never done in Continental, so it was done. The people reacted to it big time. Ron Wright knew what he was doing. Hey, no doubt. Jack, anything we need to uh discuss before we uh, get off here today? Nah, nah, I'm good. Uh, just uh, a point on you talking about Ron Wright and storytelling. Uh, you know, I, I I did some stuff at the show the other night that people are still questioning what the heck is going on. So I got them. I got them talking. Stories still work. Yes. It, 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 uh, David uh, says, I need to know the story about Kevin Sullivan. Uh, do we have time to tell? Oh, the God. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we should. I tell you what, let's do. I tell you what, let's do. Instead of, of of getting that tonight, because this story starts in 1980, Georgia Championship Wrestling, and we we kind of hit on it. This start, story starts Georgia Championship Wrestling 1980, and 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 we'll we'll get into that story. We'll 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 try to take take that because it's a it's a long story. It really needs a. It needs to be told all the way through. It's uh, it's it's an entirety. Now, like I said, now I'm I'm. I'm all right with it now. It's 30 years ago. But he did do some things. Uh, him, Abdullah Butcher, Mark Lewin, and the great Mephisto that were bad for business in 1980. And it almost it almost made Georgia Championship Wrestling really not draw any houses whatsoever. And I don't know if Jack remembers. Do you remember Mark Lewin and Abdullah Butcher matches? I sure do. They they were just starting when I left to go to Germany. Woo! Those well, matches we were, kill your territory. Uh, those let's matches. just say the greatest moment of my life at that point was when Ole fired Great Mephisto, Mark Lewin, and Abdullah. Greatest moment of my life. I just, uh, yeah, as were, I told him before, I wish you had got Kevin Sullivan while you're at it. And we, we'll get into that. We'll get into that, and we'll get into what Dad uh, had a problem with as well with Kevin Sullivan, went to Jim Barnett about it, and, 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 and truly, I think, Kevin Sullivan was gone soon afterward. And uh, we'll get into the whole situation of what he was doing and, and where dad had a problem with him and still would have a problem with him in 1986 when he came into Continental Championship Wrestling. Uh, and, and not that Kevin probably knew anything about the problem that he had, but uh, there was a couple of problems that he had. And, and uh, I think that uh, we'll get into that next week when we have a little bit of time and uh, because it's a, it's a long drawn out story. So. Jason said, "Do you guys ever uh, work in Deep South for Ann Gunkel?" I didn't. Jack, did you? Did you ever work for her in 1986? No, no. Yeah, we never. I, I met. I actually talked to her in 1986, maybe 1987. I did talk to her um, about doing some stuff for her, but the things just didn't work out. So, uh, but she seemed like a very nice lady. David Lawson always thought USA Championship Wrestling uh, was good. Tell us the inside story. That's another thing that would take a long time to tell. That's another <laughs> story. And we may not be able to tell that here. We may have to do that on a special program, okay? Uh, don't you agree I with say, that? I will say, though, like I said, for me, I, I, I didn't miss anything Ron Wright did. I no. mean, it was always, always great. 
Uh, Michael Farr said, when pro wrestling gets a name, maybe we, the watchers, the program can get T-shirts made, but what it is going to be called. Yes, as soon as we can get a name, we, we, we will certainly uh, get one together and and uh, and do that. Uh, Michael Barr, a name for the watchers of pro wrestling inside and out T-shirt. Uh, we will definitely do that. That's a good idea, Jack. Don't you think so? I do. Uh, David Lawson said, uh, Kevin seems like a good guy. Oh, yeah, Kevin Sullivan is a great guy. He is a good guy, yeah. yeah. Great guy, great. The, the problems that my father had with with Kevin Sullivan had nothing to do with him being a great guy, and, and, and so so that's not the problem. It was uh, all business. If anybody knew my father, Ron West, he was completely uh, a business oriented person. It was about business. Jack knows he's got the he got the bad side of dad a few times. Yep, he has <laughs> chewed my behind and then bought me a beer as soon as the show was over with. <laughs> Uh, it was just, it was just something at the time that he thought was bad for business. And, uh, and we'll get into that. We will actually get into that next week. We'll talk about that in, in length of, of uh, what was going on at the time. Uh, you got to remember in 1980, Georgia championship wrestling was, uh, was not drawing very well. Uh, not at all. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we'll get into the whole, uh, the whole stuff, uh, to uh, tell people exactly what happened. All right. Anything else we need to speak about before we leave today? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm all right right here. We'll. Well, we got a lot of stuff we need to. We need to. Uh, what would I say? Unpacked. Yes, Unpacked. that was the word of the day last time on the show. I'm trying don't to, even, to don't even know what that meant, but I just said this sounds good. You know, I just wing this thing every week, and I have no clue what I'm maybe going to say. You know, so I just, I just, whatever comes. You know, we don't, we don't really plan anything. We do have some things most of the time we're going to talk about, but uh, it's not like we're going to plan on what we're going to talk about. Whatever comes out of our mouth comes out of our mouth. Don't, uh, we never have. And, anything. And I, I would point out that we had over 2,500 viewers of last Monday night's podcast. So. Uh, you folks are tuning in and, and, uh, man, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, like us, follow us, share us, uh, you know, help us get the word out, you know, 2,500 in just a few months, man, that's, that's, that's an accomplishment. And we're, yeah. we're thankful for, to each of y'all for that. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you're watching on Facebook, share with a friend, tell someone about the uh, pro wrestling inside and out and tell them we're talking uh, old school professional wrestling. And a couple of times we throw some stuff in there about the uh, new uh, professional wrestling. Well, our, our modern professional wrestling, uh, but uh, tell people about it, like, and share the Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. That way we know that you're liking what we're doing and uh, subscribe and hit that little notification bell. It'll let you know when we're uh, going to uh, upload another video. All right, guys, it is time for us to say goodbye. And we will see you next time on the Wrestling Conversation right here on Pro Wrestling Inside and Out Live.